I'm so fucking dead, dude. We have a fucking rug on our table. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, but we do. Yeah. Believe us. We're getting classy around here. We just can't show it. I don't know how classy it is. Yeah. If they don't like how I talk, go take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <sighs> oh, speaking of, what are we doing today, Phil? We're doing a double feature. And I was thinking about the, the genre. I was a drama. Mm-hmm. Okay? But to me, you know, we're getting to the holiday season of, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm-hmm. And Just me, finishing up Halloween. Yeah. But I feel like our first, this one... Me, it's not like a genre genre, but it's something I thought of. It's more like. I mean, kind of is. I mean, no, it's not like how I'm going to say it. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, not knowing yourself and then finding yourself kind of genre. Yeah. Because in the holidays, you know, people get worked up with being somebody that they're not. Yeah. And all that, but this is like finding who you really are and then being true to yourself. And, and not only that, it's one of those things that kind of show a light on something that's usually frowned upon or doesn't really want to be talked about type yeah. of thing. So, I mean, well, one, yes, but the other one's kind of more like uh, when, we, when you're uh, depressed, like you can't tell anybody because people look down on depression and all mm-hmm. that. So yes, in a way, both of it has something that people don't want to talk about. Right. So have you subjects, I guess. Yeah, that would be a good word for it. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Whatever, bro. <laughs> you caught me. Anyways. What are we doing first? The mo- well, first of all, the movies that we big. One's not so much independent, uh, because I actually got some Oscars when it was uh, brought out. Um, and that is? Green Book. Green Book. Which, uh... We'll talk about in a second. Yeah. <laughs> but... You got it. I was going to say... No, I was going to say something about... But I want to say that when we actually start talking about the movie. Uh, but the other movie is Prince, Prince Avalanche. You got it, though. Fuck you! Uh, packing my shit. Which, that's the movie that most people probably ha- haven't heard of. It used to be on Netflix, sadly, they took it all. But uh, that's what we were talking about first. Mm-hmm. And that that has uh, Paul Rudd and Bill Hirsch in it. Right. And obviously people... Know Pretty good actors. Yeah. Actor. People know who Paul Rudd is because, I mean, if you don't know who Ant-Man is, then you live on, on the rock. Or yeah. you're a DC fan. Yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, but Bill Hirsch, people might not know as much, but he was in The, the Girl Next Door. Uh, he was actually in the new Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He was yep. actually the next door neighbor. Yep. Uh, I remember. But, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay, so it starts out with pretty much this uh, guy. He ends up starting to work with, uh, what was it? Well, how was it? Uh, Paul Rudd's character was dated. It was person. the wife's. No, dating. Or the girlfriend's dad, wasn't uh, it? No, girl, girlfriend's dad. <laughs> girlfriend's brother. Girlfriend's brother. I knew it was something like that. Jeez. Yeah, like the guy who's like, I mean, he's only, he's not the Paul Rudd's character, jeez. That's true. Unless That's true. Went back to the future. Kind of. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But, um, and they're pretty much working, doing like street work, you know, yeah. putting up signs, painting the roads. Yeah. And they have to, I don't remember how many miles they have to do, but. I, I think it was. Uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. But honestly, the work wise, it was fun, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I mean, boring, I mean it seems like it's one of those jobs where you can get a little workout in with it. Then you can kind of just chill, relax, talk, you know, just kind of well, be at well, peace. It obviously depends on who you work with. But to me, yeah. the idea. Uh, it, like this takes place in like the 80s uh, but the idea that all you just do it because you wouldn't you wouldn't realize how many models you're doing because you're doing blind and then kind of the space is blind kind of, kind of thing so uh, you would lose track of it unless you had like a a, a pit bit kind of thing and right. realized how many models mm-hmm. you've done but, but they didn't have that well yeah obviously but I'm just saying like nowadays come on Phil like I wouldn't mind having that kind of job, you know, if I wanted to get away from people. 
I mean, yeah, they probably make a good bit of money too. Yeah, that's true too. They probably get government benefits because they're doing roads and all that. Mm-hmm. But and then you get to camp out for for a week. That's true. Weeks, oh, you know, you get the weekends off, but you know, camp the rest of the time. That'd be, that'd be interesting, you know. That's true. Uh, Unless you're going through what they got. Yeah. Or both of them. Well, one just didn't uh, know what it meant to be growing grow up. Mm-hmm. And that's and I, I understand because I'm not saying that I agree with the things that he was saying, but I could understand where he was coming from mm-hmm. and that mindset and, you know, not wanting a kid at his age and, you know, being young and forty pretty much. Right. You know, he wanted a date his friend's girl and then they found out and he got punished and yeah. the other one who started working on stuff to be better for his relationship and that girl pretty much using the money to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but not knowing how to how to be good in a relationship and I understand that part because, you know, I don't know his his character's past he might have had a whole bunch of shitty relationship and just didn't know how you are in a relationship what what it means to be in a relationship. Right. And then also I like how it touches on the fact that no matter what is going on and it, it, it seems like sometimes you need to stop and take a break, you know, yeah. you just need to just need to but slow down. But you can take a break but you gotta realize when you need to get go back in and yeah. take because that was the problem with the girl that had the girl his girlfriend or fiance or whatever was side with her because she hadn't seen him in a while and he had the weekend golf. And he never went back and saw her because he was working on himself. But by doing that, he, he kind of lost the love of the girl because all he all she got was nothing. But I guess she wouldn't be good if she was an army guy. That's true. <laughs> but Maybe she just didn't sign up for it. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing when you're dating an army person and you know that's what you get into, but when somebody just goes off and goes yeah. back and all you get is letters, it, yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah. But, it, to me, you know, like, I was like, he had all this depression built up, and not saying anything about, you know, her scared, but all of it, you know, the little dunks and all that, and I, mm-hmm. I know somebody in my life that's kind of like this, and um, when you try to tell him stuff, he, you know, he doesn't really know what to say, So, but that's the only person he hasn't been to. And then, honestly, I think that's what his character needed, though, was to be, have something to live in. Right. But I still love my favorite scene is when he goes, when he's by himself, and Mel Hurst went to, uh, went to town for the weekend, uh, when he finds that old lady in the, yeah. in the house that burnt down. That was good. Made me almost tear up. Yeah. A bit. Just the whole line of, like, I'm digging, I feel like I'm digging around my ashes, you know? Yeah. That, that, that line. And then it turns out that in the end, uh, she wasn't a lot. Like she wasn't yeah, that, that was a crazy ending. It, I mean, but it also kind of, like what you say, you're digging your own ashes. It kind of it show it's actually him visioning someone else yeah, doing like, what yeah, he's if doing. If you were stuck in a spot and couldn't go anywhere besides you're there, this is what it's always going to be. You're going to be stuck. Right. You're and then when you die, you, if you come back, the only thing you're going to remember is you're doing this, so you, even your spirit's going to be doing it, yeah. you know? So might as well leave on a good note, you know. And go skydiving. Hey, you know, you only fell once. I mean, unless you break a bunch of bones, but you survive or something. Mm-hmm. The chance of survival. Depends. Maybe, I mean, maybe you get caught by a tree in the Well, shore. that's what I'm saying. That's all like, but you're going to be worse. If it would have been easier if you just landed on the ground, and then you go hit a tree and the, the stick goes through your body, and you're sitting there and you're like, ugh, ugh, and just like you bleed out. And then, what if it went through your body from like, like it kebobbed you from the head? That would suck too. But it would have, I, I would like hope, the eyeball. Like, I hope that, like, it would be fast though. If that's the case. Cause I don't you just lie. like, I you wanna, feel, wanna, you feel it for a millisecond. You just, it's done. Well, it was a millisecond, that's fine. But I just don't want to... Uh, but that would suck, though. Well, like, imagine, imagine that yeah. millisecond. Yeah, I mean, it would be a true shade, but imagine <laughs> if... Uh. Uh, if it was, like, a whole minute, and you just, like, bloop, 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 and just, like, sitting there twitching and still feeling everything. I wouldn't want that. Like, I want to find 
destination death. But like I wanted ones where the person got looking and then like like in part three when the guy gets the engine in the back of his head and never saw it coming, but he's dead like That's true. Yeah. But like anyway shot or something. Yeah. I don't want to get shot. I don't want to like they have to shoot him point blank in the head. Or like in the head. So I, I don't know. I feel like it would take a little bit longer to, uh because if you're brain dead, you're brain dead so you don't feel anything. But the heart, true. you know, you just have to bleed out. That's true. Anyways, that's what you learned about us and how we kind of want to die. Yeah, we, we ventured off into that. But, um... Well, the guy did try to commit suicide in the, in the, even though he just jumped off a small wall. <laughs> okay, and then afterwards she was like, no. <laughs> okay, so what would you rate this? Um, before I rate this, I forgot we actually... Or I actually told, said the wrong thing. We're doing the next movie in another video. So this is just Prince Avalanche. Yeah. Or else it'd be like a 35 minute video. 30? No. Yeah, that's fine. No feature. We couldn't do them in a single video. No, we're doing no feature for everybody. Okay, double feature. I'm wrong. Surprise, motherfuckers. French fries, motherfuckers. <laughs> but what are you gonna rate this? I'm gonna give this movie a seven out of ten. He was like, I'm gonna have to start breathing hard back here. Wait so, till you wait till you hear the next movie. Fuck you. Uh, I just randomly watched this movie on Netflix. I didn't have no expectations of this one. I like I kinda of first got Netflix and didn't know what to watch and all that. Mm-hmm. And it, the movie just stuck with me because where I was in my life at that time, and, uh, and then I still watch it because I see, you know, like like I said, you gotta find yourself, and right. it helps me kind of put my life in perspective sometimes. So I'm gonna give this movie a seven point seven five because I do feel like it means it means something. Yeah. yeah. So fourteen point seven five. Oh, well, you did that math quick. I wasn't even thinking about it yet. That's crazy. Just because of the glasses. But, you know, that means... Oh, shit. Why did it have to be a fucking boat horn? I mean... That's not any better. What do any of these noises mean, Phil? <laughs> You went on a slot machine or something? Yeah. Slot machine alive. We're on another level, that's what it means. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get out of you. Well, you're trying to get something out of me, Yes. What's your song, Phil? No, I'm going over <laughs> Hey, Yeah, Phil. I don't even have my, my uh, lyrics. Let, let it go a little bit slow. Bro, yeah. Hungry Shark. Shark TV. That's not what I was. That's not what I was. My song, like this genre that we're doing, but sometimes how I feel in my life, too. My song is, can mm-hmm. I slow it up for you? Huh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You always sing a really big part, so I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I will. I'm doing Fall in Reverse. Uh-huh. Loser. Why? Because I feel like a loser sometimes. Oh, okay. Quite a bit of time. So, especially when some people make me feel like that. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Super Monster Sex yeah. Action? Yeah. Run, my dear, as fast as you can. You killed me here. The blood's on your hands. 
Oh, I don't really think that you ever understand the person that I was, the person that I am. I'm different now. You're distant, how? We ever work this out? You're always getting me high. Then you're pulling me low. Then you're begging to stay. But you want me to go. You're always telling me yes. But your answer is no. If you want me to guess, I'm just a stranger that you know. If you call this winning, why do I feel like a loser? Yeah, yeah, I'm just a loser. Yeah, yeah, guess I am a loser. If you call calling this winning, why do I feel like a loser? Because you are. I know. That's what people tell me. Did they actually tell you that? Yeah. Who has told you that? I can't say it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. They might watch this video. <laughs> make things that make me feel better for myself. But luckily, I got this channel that makes you feel better. Okay, so the song I'm doing, um, I'm not actually going to sing a part of the song. I'm actually going to do the intro of the song. No, you got to do a little bit longer than that. Well, it's not lyrics. What? I mean, no, it is lyrics. It's not instrumentals. Like, I'm not making noises. <laughs> I'm not doing that. It's an intro. You ready? Gripping the wheel, his knuckles went white with desire. The wheels of his Mustang exploding on the highway like a slug from a 45. True death. 400 horsepower of maximum performance, piercing the night. This is Black Sunshine. Give us a little line or two. I'll skip a little bit. Sweet the ride! Black Sunshine! <laughs> Sweet the ride! Yeah! Sweet the ride! Black Sunshine! There you go. Who's that by? Rob Zombie. No. Well, it's Iggy Pop. No. What is it? Oh, White Zombie. Duh. It's White Zombie. But yeah, there's a big difference between White Zombie and Rob Zombie. Yeah, I know. I was... No, shut up. I get it. Anyways, our next video. Green Book. Our next video? Yeah. Our part of the video. <sighs> I want to give it the people's elbow. The people's elbow? Yeah. All the people that's watching. Not is that what that is that what that means? Is that why he made that? The million, millions, and millions watching at home. And the thousands in attendance. Does he say that? Yeah. I don't believe it. Well, so like he has that much time to say that, and the guy's just like, <laughs> "Well, not why he's doing it." Oh. But, Green Book. What do you, what do you think? Good move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know how he goes. He goes, how is the food? Salty. That's kind of how it is. Oh, Tony, the Italian. <laughs> Tony, Tony Lip. <laughs> First off, um... So this is the mo this is one of those taboo movies, you know, touch one yeah. like you know, last one did more of the depression and kinda how that goes through. Mm -hmm. This one's more of the racial taboo and kinda changing the life and, you know, yeah. changing perspective of one and then changing respect to the other at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, with each other too. They kinda just learn <laughs> learn from each other. Feel has nothing to do with Well it did. It had to do with the movie. <laughs> with the shower scene. It has nothing to do with the shower scene. Uh, Unless you're into that kind of stuff. Anyway, so uh, this movie starts out with you know just this Italian guy that's doing Italian guy things, really, you know. Hey, Ew, you know, no, you know, no hate for Italians. I hate you, buddy. I hate out dogs. If you t if you tell me that, uh, what competition? <laughs> I was just hungry. He says, I was left out of this competition. What competition? I was just, that was great. Man, uh, I love, I love, like, Italian humor. Because it, to them, it's just so simple and, like, fluent. Yeah. Like, like, the reference I made at the beginning. Like, oh, oh bingo! They don't like the way I talk, I go take a shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like who are you talking to? Don't go take a shit, you know? Let the person that's listening to you talk, or? Yeah. 
But uh, it starts off comical, and then he meets uh, Doctor so, Sh- Sh- Shirley. Doctor Shirley, I can't remember the last part of it. But um, and then he meets them, and he needs a, a tour driver, a tour. I pay much a, uh, a butler, bodyguard, yeah. driver, chauffeur, bodyguard. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah. 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 And he's like, <laughs> you gotta smoke everywhere you go. Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm doing all the work here. But <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, yeah. But um, <laughs> anyway, so he ends but the up. The further we get into it, the more uh, I would I would say sadder, but more like. It gets realer. Yeah. It gets more intense. Once, once they start getting to know each other. And when they get further and further down south oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Because it's the time... Where, it's the time where colored people weren't really allowed everywhere. You know, they had the colored people section and then they had the... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Well, I agree, you know, it definitely deserves all the awards it gets and all the credit it gets. It's amazing acting, I think, yeah. and I love the moral. I love how everything fell into place. So I'm actually going to give it an 8.75 out of 10. So 17. 17. So definitely. 17 out of 20. Watch it. If, if you like a good story and all that great book is definitely not saying Prince Avalanche is but it's a different kind of kind of, kind of story yeah but you definitely want good acting and it's and it's also like they have Italian so when it comes to the white people they didn't like it's not just a typical white person you know it's he actually it's actually like you don't really see Italians you know mixing like yeah. Especially like how it started where it's like family, Italians, Italians, Italians. They don't really go out of their comfort zone as much. Sure. And back in those times, you know, being the the power that uh, Dr. Shirley is, you know, he's out, out of his groups. Yeah. So, he has a good line about that too. Really. Yeah, so it just, I, it just works really well together. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it deserves what I gave it. Yeah. But anyways, thank you for tuning in for another special episode. You know what I say? Stay classy. Ah, yeah.